combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. If you're brand new to the show, head on over to JimmyRants.com and you can see how it all works. We start off on Instagram and I do a live video a couple of times a day. Uh, so go follow me on Instagram at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. And you can engage in the content just like all these awesome people are right now. Then, if you miss it live on Instagram, you can still watch the replay for 24 hours over on Instagram. But after 24 hours, Instagram, poof, it goes away. So we grab the video and we upload it to YouTube for you guys that miss it. All of the past archived episodes of Jimmy Rants are located on YouTube. So go find the videos, type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants. You might even do this now, now that we have over 130 episodes. Type in Jimmy Rants and then some keyword uh, of something to see if I've talked about it. And uh, like Jimmy Rants cholesterol. And then you'll find where I've ranted about something about cholesterol. Um, so try that. Let me know how that goes. And then finally, the Jimmy Rants podcast is on Apple Podcasts. Go check it out, you guys. JimmyRants.com Today's Jimmy Rants is inspired by a question I got in my Instagram mailbox yesterday from a lady that said, Hey, what do you think about these fat bombs? Are they necessary when you go keto? And of course, I've talked about this before. Uh, we could also throw in, I suppose, bulletproof coffee into this discussion. Really anything where you're putting pure, unadulterated fat into your body as a means for getting more fat into your macros to fit your percentage of macros, okay? So what I want to say on this Jimmy Rants verifiably is why I'm no fan of fat bombs on keto. Now, let me give the proper caveat up front. If you use fat bombs, if you drink bulletproof coffee, if you use these as a tool in your keto journey and you are seeing success doing that, please do not mishear me that I'm saying that you're wrong in any way. No, you're not. You're doing it in the right way. Um, you're getting benefit out of it. Great. What I'm fearful of are the brand new people who come to keto and they learn about what a low carb, moderate protein, high fat diet is. And they think in order to be ketogenic, you must consume fat bombs. Now, for those of you that don't know what a fat bomb is, usually it's some uh, coconut oil based high fat, uh, basically like a little candy that you make out of coconut oil and other high fat types of foods. I saw somebody, oh, it was my friend, ketogenic girl. Uh, she had a friend make her, uh, some, what was it? Some really dark chocolate with coconut oil on the one side of the fat bomb. And the other side of the fat bomb had coconut butter and cashew butter. So a whole lot of fat in that. And if those things help you, so be it great. Rock on with your keto lifestyle. But my fear is people come into the community like this person that wrote me yesterday and they think they have to use those in order to be keto. Can I tell you, I've never had a fat bomb uh, that's like that. I've never, you know, gotten a mold and, and you know, poured coconut oil, chocolate mixture and let it sit in the fridge and then pop those in my mouth. I've never once done that because you don't have to do that. And here's my thinking on it. If you're going to add more fat to your diet, why don't you do it on top of your food? So if you have a steak, why not put a pat of butter on the steak? If you're going to drink uh, bulletproof coffee and throw uh, coconut oil and and butter into that, why don't you mix it with the vegetables that you consume? Unless you're already doing that with those things, 
you're flooding your body with a whole lot of energy that maybe is overdoing it. And here's what happens. Sometimes people will have the fat bombs and a lot of people get satiation from it and they get great benefit from it. That's great. What other people do is they drink bulletproof coffee, for example, and they're drinking that bulletproof coffee and an hour later they're having a meal and they're having the regular amount of energy that they would consume. All keto-friendly stuff, but they're eating along with the extra fat. And I think it's a slippery slope. If you allow yourself to go down that, that path of, oh, well, I want to make sure I keep my fat super high, which you do want to keep it high as a percentage of your calories, but you don't want to do it at the expense of over-consuming energy. And notice I'm not saying calories, I'm saying energy. Because at the end of the day, those fat calories, yeah, they're benign in raising your blood sugar, they're benign in raising your insulin levels, but at some point they are going to have an impact on your body if you're just popping fat bombs like they're going out of style. So if you're just joining us, I'm explaining why I'm not a fan, uh, a fan of the popular trend in the keto community right now of using fat bombs. Uh, and we're also extending this to the Bulletproof Coffee people that use that. And I gave the caveat up front. If that's working for you, go for it. Rock on. Keep being successful. I don't want brand new people to this way of eating thinking, though, that they have to eat those things in order to be keto. So do you guys use fat bombs? Do you like them? Is it something that you find is helpful to keep you on the straight and narrow? I have never found... Uh, that you needed it uh, in order to be keto. Now, one thing I did put in my book, Keto Clarity, is if you have cravings for carbohydrates and if you have um, some kind of like where you're just like, I'm going to eat the whole house and home of carbs, then have uh, some cheese and put some butter on top of it and stick it in your mouth and that will zap your cravings. So the fat bombs would serve in that purpose that if you're brand new to this, perhaps it would quell some of those uh, things that you think you need and want, the cravings. So in that instance, it would be helpful. But people are popping these things like they're candy. They're popping them like, and they're using them as a dessert, as a treat, uh, and a lot of them, not all of them, the one that uh, Vanessa Spina had, uh, had no sweeteners in it. But a lot of people are putting a lot of sweeteners in it as well. So you got to be mindful of all of those things. All of these things that we talk about, like fat bombs, like bulletproof coffee, you've got to look at them as tools. Tools in the toolbox of your journey. And they're not the be-all, end-all. They're not going to be the thing that will save you and make you a fat-burning beast, um, but they are there as a tool when you need them strategically. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're eating fat bombs every single day, why? Just eat real food and add the real food-based fats to your food. All right, I want to see what you guys have to say, and I know this is controversial, so, so let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, 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 Bonnie, hello, Jesse, hello, BB. Thanks for being here, you guys. Welcome in. Hello, Joette. Hello, Ashton. Hello, Lori. Jesse says, "Glad you're touching on the fat bombs. I've never gotten into them. Some swear by them, and I'd like to hear your opinion." Yeah. So, again, I think some people do very well with them because they know how to manage it. My other concern is a lot of people come to keto from the dieting world and or from a binge eating perspective. And if someone is used to just popping food in their mouth as a binge eater, how tempting is it with these little shapes that you make for the fat bombs to just pop it in your mouth and pop it in your mouth and pop it in your mouth like bonbons? And yes, satiety should kick in, but sometimes your brain says, hey, I want more of that, especially if it's sweet. So major, major concerns. Uh, I haven't had a fat bomb since I started in September. Yeah, me neither, Aunt N4. Um, I, I don't personally get it because I'd rather have more fat with my food, but people swear by them and they love them. So rock on if you, if you get success. 
Uh, Jesse wants to know, how do you get very emotionally sweet attached people over the hump? Um, you're talking to one. <laughs> I, I used to, before I went on the Atkins side, I told this story the other day on Jimmy Rance. I drank 16 cans of Coca-Cola a day. Yeah, 16. As in one, six. As in double eight. A lot. I used to eat whole boxes of Little Debbie snack cakes. I would eat candy and sugary stuff like it was going out of style. And all you can tell people that are in that situation is you can't tell them anything. You have to let them taste and see that fat is good. That's where fat can be helpful to a sweet attached person. And maybe for a little while, having these fat bombs could help someone in that situation. But as a regular thing in a regular day-to-day -day keto diet, they are really not necessary over the long term. But for people like that, that is a strategic use of fat bombs and getting more fat into the diet. Bonnie Linnae says, my husband is a sweet junkie, so when we do keto, it might help him stay keto, but not sure he's going to miss sweets. Well, here's the thing. I gave up my sweetness because I did several things. Number one, I stopped eating sugar. So that was a huge thing. And it happens pretty quick, you guys. You would think, oh my gosh, you're so addicted to sugar. You've got to treat it just like you would a drug addiction. You've got to get people off of their drug, which is sugar. And really, the ancillary of the drug is the carbohydrates to turn to sugar in the body. So not just the sweet stuff on the tongue, but really anything that would turn to sugar in the body. That's number one. And they're going to have withdrawal symptoms. I was in such misery those first few days of being on the Atkins diet when I started that it was murderous. But I was now, in hindsight, I realized I was detoxing from a major chemical dependence on sugar. That's where I was. And so I overcame it because I started saying a mantra to myself. And maybe, Bonnie, this will help you and your husband. Um, you have to look at sugar as rat poison. Now, obviously, on a conscious level, it's not rat poison. And you know that. But if you tell yourself it's rat poison... And you use that as a mantra when you uh, see something that's sugary and you desire something sugary. That pause that you get because you have in your brain, oh my gosh, that's rat poison, is just enough to say, okay, let me get something else. Let me get something uh, like a fat bomb to maybe help. So again, in that situation, I think it can be helpful to someone like your husband, Bonnie, uh, who is a sweet junkie, as you described. Lori says, I don't do fat bombs now because I have uh, two. When I started, I felt like I had to. Uh, I do it now only as a sweet treat or if I've had a protein heavy day. So yeah, so keeping in mind that a ketogenic diet that's well formulated is one that's low carb, moderate protein, high fat. So some people, they say, well, if I've had a lot of protein, like I had, to, I, I ate out with friends and I had a couple of chicken breasts as a meal and that was heavy in protein. So I've got to make up the fat macros. Can I just be honest and say, don't, don't make up the fat macros in that instance, unless you're in a hypocaloric state where you haven't had, but maybe eight, 900 calories. Don't feel like you have to make up for protein by adding in more fat in the form of fat bumps. Because this is where people get into trouble where they start over consuming and you start reaching for some arbitrary level of fat just to, quote, offset the protein. Just start again the next day and the next day add more pro or add more fat to your diet if you had too much protein today. We try to make this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And this is part of my problem with the use of fat bombs is people are using them to hit some ma imaginary macronutrient ratio goal. Stop that. Let's stop that. You don't need them for that purpose. Now, if you want to use them as a sweet treat every once in a while on your keto diet that's keto friendly, great. That's your purpose. That's what you're doing. But you don't need to if you're at 67% fat and you're trying to get to 70 something percent fat uh, to hit a macro goal. Don't eat fat, just pure fat in the form of fat bombs to get there. Okay, I didn't quite hit fat today. Let's make up for it tomorrow. That's how you do it. 
because people are ending up eating way too many, too much energy for their body when they do this. Yellow-eyed one says, I realize this is why I fail because it triggers me into eating so many. Then I'm done. I need not have erythritol at all. See, yellow-eyed one, you know that about yourself. And what happens is people see these little shapes and things. I've, I've seen teddy bear shapes. I've seen all kinds of shapes with the, uh, with the candy molds that people use to do these fat bombs. And they're cute and everything, but then it reminds you of maybe eating gummy bears or maybe eating, uh, you know, whatever crap that was in shapes before. And that's my concern too, is people will treat fat bombs like candy and that's not their intended purpose at all. Ashton says, I don't like fat bombs. My sweet craving stopped and now I want salty food. Yeah, that's the other thing for people that use these. When does it get you off of your sweet craving? Well, how does it do that if you're continuing to stoke the sweetness? Now, obviously, some fat bombs are made without sweeteners, like the one Vanessa Spina showed earlier on her Instagram channel, but not all of them. A lot of them do have sweeteners still in them, and you have to be mindful of what that's doing psychologically to you um, and how you're treating these fat bombs. Grandma Does Keto says there are way too many snacks loaded with sweeteners that are added in. Lots of newbies concentrate on the snacks, saving their carbs for these instead of eating vegetables. It drives me crazy. Yeah, uh, Grandma Does Keto, that is a real and present danger. And again, those of you that are savvy veterans, you know this stuff. It's these people that are brand new to keto. And maybe you're watching this right now. And maybe you're brand new to keto. You're trying to get your feet wet. You heard about this Jimmy Moore guy and you're checking out his Jimmy rants, but I got to tell you guys, it's better to start with three basic things than using fat bombs. Number one, some fatty source of protein. Make that the basis of your meals. Number two, non-starchy and green leafy vegetables. And I would lean more to the green leafy when you first start. Things like spinach and kale uh, and lettuce and, and romaine, all those kinds of things. And then finally, you want to add in fat. So you can add butter to the top of a steak. You can uh, put avocado oil, maybe a little bit a little bit of lemon juice on top of the salad that you made with those vegetables. Um, if you're making cauliflower or broccoli, you could mix in some butter or lard into that, coconut oil into that. You could put a little bit of cheese on top of that as well, full fat cheese. Um, that's how you overcome the sweet cravings is you start eating that way. And it's the weirdest thing because people are like, oh, I'll miss my sweets. And I'm like, get into keto, get keto adapted and you'll find out you won't miss your sweets. You really won't. And so you're right, grandma does keto. People do seek out those snack foods. And the bad thing is 2019 is going to be the year of the keto snack food. Everybody and their mama is gonna be having some keto this, keto that snack food. And can I warn people now to be careful with that? While there are some really great products that are out there, there are going to be some really, really sucky products as well. So don't get, don't fall for the trap just because it says keto on the packaging. Uh, Bonnie says, I've never had a fat bomb. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Mrs. Bartley's Life says, first time on keto, I did them. This time around, I'm not. Yeah. <sighs> I think the trendiness of keto gets people to do things that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And fat bombs is one of those things. So if you're just joining us, I'm talking about why I'm no fan of using fat bombs on keto. It's all the rage. Everybody says, oh, you need to have fat bombs. You got to make up a bunch of fat bombs so that you can help you know, hit your macronutrient ratio percentage for fat. And I'm thinking, that is the stupidest thing in the world. Unless you're getting benefit out of it. Don't misunderstand me. If you're getting benefit and you're loving it, go for it. Keep going. But people that are brand new to this, add fat to your food. Don't think you have to get them in the form of these little cutesy shaped candy mold fat bombs. I love the treats because I love the sweet. Of course, I'm not doing any nuts or fat bombs this time around. Excellent. Way to go, yellow-eyed one. Newbies often haven't learned to control their hunger and snack urges yet, so fat bomb bombs can be overdone. Jesse, yes. 
and they'll use it as candy, not realizing they're getting a big bolus of energy when they eat those things. And so, yeah, whereas like candy would have been just maybe 50, 60 calories, a fat bomb of the same size could be two, 300 calories. And so it's a huge difference, especially if you eat them in the exact same way that you did the candy before. Hey, Dory, how are you? Hello, Lindy. Do you agree having coffee with MCT oil for the fat? I love coffee. I put butter and MCT in it. Uh, in it. It's delicious. Um, I mentioned that at the very beginning that I'm throwing in Bulletproof Coffee in with this same rant about fat bombs. Um, number one, I hate coffee, so it's easy for me to be against Bulletproof Coffee, but it's the same concept. You're just putting pure unadulterated fat into your body. And so I don't see how that alone is giving you benefit when you could be putting the fat on the food that you're eating. Now, again, if you're getting benefit and you drink a Bulletproof coffee and you don't eat your breakfast and you're able to go many hours without eating because of that fatty coffee, then please keep rocking on with your fatty coffee. It's those people who drink the fatty coffee and then an hour later they're having a full-sized meal. I'm like, you're missing the point of having the Bulletproof coffee. Uh, ba, 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 Keto Couple Bandit said, we used to do Bulletproof, but now we've stopped doing it. Yeah, I think a lot of people are realizing it may be holding them back. Some people get great benefit, but other people, it's just another means for getting way too much energy into your body. Uh, Jonathan Mass 12, uh, 2012 says, if I make fat bombs, I cut the sweetener down as low as possible. And I think that's probably okay uh, but again, you're getting a lot of the fat in your body uh, in that form where you're just popping it in your mouth. Why not just add that fat to your food? Uh, John Tuck, I just switched over to carnivore after almost two years keto and down 100 pounds. Yeah, I'm in the midst of doing carnivore now, so definitely no fat bombs when you're doing carnivore. <laughs> hmm. Lard bombs, maybe, I guess. Butter bombs. Nah. Uh, beautiful binge eater. I don't use fat bombs. I try and stay away from things that are treats because it's a slippery slope. And that is the trouble. That is the big trouble with using these things is it is a slippery slope. It's very easy to go down that path where you think you need them when then after a while, all you're doing is eating them out of habit. Um... Sherry Smile says, I wasn't losing my belly fat because my body wasn't using its own fat. So I don't think uh, that fat bombs are bad because they prevent you from tapping in to your stored body fat. I think they're bad because they don't train you to use and incorporate fat in the right way and to put it into your diet. That to me is the proper use of dietary fat, not to just be consumed straight up for some arbitrary goal of hitting some macronutrient ratio, but for making foods taste better. That's one thing that it does. And, and here's the thing that will help you remember this as well. Vegetables are your conduit for getting more fat. If you want a fat bomb and you want to get a nutrient density in your fat bombs and get all the benefits that you get from the fat bombs you're consuming now, Try adding grass-fed butter to your vegetables. That is a fat bomb. Uh, Elfina Tree, when would Bulletproof Coffee be a good idea? Well, number one, if you like coffee, I would rather you have some fat in it. My concern is the people that put so much fat in it that you're getting eight, 900 calories worth of energy in there. And then on top of that, you're eating meal. That's no bueno. So if you're using Bulletproof Coffee in the morning and that's your replacement for your breakfast lunch and you're only having a dinner meal, then sure, have a Bulletproof Coffee. That's great. But that would be the only time I would say is if it's able to sustain you throughout the day and you'll burn ketone, ketones when you do that. So definitely can be good in that aspect. But if you're, if you're doing the Bulletproof Coffee and you're eating meals, that to me is no bueno. Healthy Keto Chick says, I use fat bombs or fatty coffee to help get fat adapted in the beginning. And again, if you're using it strategically and knowing that that's why you're doing it, um, 
is to help you get fat adapted and to to kind of get you kick started on this. Great. Again, the habit thing kicks in where people, they're so used to eating fat bombs, they're so used to doing bulletproof coffee because it's what they started with that they never wean themselves off of it and try to shift to putting the fat in their food. Hey Sam, Griff Sam 88 says, lifting weights and putting on muscle, I choose to add extra butter on my real food protein steak to help be in a surplus. So yes, you will add more energy, but butter on top of a steak, dude, I mean, it makes it taste so good. I don't remember the last time I used like A1 or Heinz 57 or any kind of like traditional steak sauce on a steak. You don't need it. It's not necessary when you're eating real whole foods and then adding real food-based fats like uh, grass-fed butter to the top. So Marie, if you don't know what a fat bomb is, go back and watch the replay of this because I explained that at the beginning. Strawberry cheesecake fat bombs in the beginning of my journey were helpful, but you have to eliminate them after a while, says John Tuck. And John, that's the trick. When do you pull them? And does the draw and the, let's just say it, the addiction to them keep you eating them long after you really need to have them? So in my opinion, it's better to come off of them sooner than later and or don't go on them at all. Uh, Jonathan Mass 2012 says, when I search the web for keto desserts, I'm surprised at how much sweetener is in the recipe. Then I just make up my own. Yeah, that's a whole nother topic of getting your palate used to not being so used to sweet. And uh, it's a problem. Um, and definitely with fat bombs, it's a big problem because people are loading it up with sweetener. The good news is if people are making their own, they can control the sweetness. So that's great. And you can back off on the amount of sweetness depending on your palate. So that's good. Uh, Rebecca K, 1974. I agree. The more I eat them, the more I want them. And I find myself even sprinkling extra sweetener on them. See, there it is. That's what I'm talking about, Rebecca. Thank you for uh, your comment because you're illustrating exactly what I was just talking about. That the addictive property to the sweetness. No, it's not sugar, but the sweetness itself. And I wonder, for those of us that have broken metabolisms, how much of even that sweet taste, no calories, no carbs, but the sweet taste is telling our brain, woohoo, and we get an insulin response. I wouldn't be surprised. L. Andrew, for people newer to keto, it can be challenging uh, to get the uh, intake of fat higher, even with butter, et cetera, on vegetables and meat. Sneaking in a little extra fat through Bulletproof Coffee and Fat Bombs can. So yeah, in that case, um, Dr. Landrieu, thank you for chiming in. I agree that it can be a useful tool in the beginning. But again, when do you wean them back? When do they realize that you can add that fat to your food? I suppose I'm an in-game kind of guy where I want to see what's the end result? What's the end goal? The end goal is to get people to eat mostly real whole foods from real food-based fats. And I think having them rely on fat bombs and or bulletproof coffee to get the fat in, they're not training themselves how to get that full fatness into their meals. So I would rather them add butter to a steak, coconut oil or lard uh, into their vegetables because then they start learning. And plus you get the bonus of, Oh my God, how good does this food taste? Because I've added in the fat. Uh, my detoxing was extreme headaches and sweats. Four days of hell, says Mrs. Barkley. Oh, when you first started. Yeah, it was bad for me too. Jonathan says, steak is my dessert. Burnt rib tips are my fat bombs. <laughs> I love that, dude. That's cool. Yeah, I'd rather have pork belly. If I'm going to eat something that's like a, a big bolus of fat, it's going to be pork belly. That's my go-to. Uh, I know you just started carnivore. How was the first day? So yeah, I posted earlier on my Instagram how it's going and definitely watch for my updates. I'll be posting pictures and updates every day. But I just got the blood test run. So I'm like a vampire right now with all the blood they sucked out of me. 
Uh, Sherry says, I told myself my body is metabolically damaged, so sugar and carbs are like an allergy to my body. Good job. I wouldn't eat peanuts if I was told I was allergic to them, and that might kill me. Same with sugar. Yeah, that's good. I love it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Look at your whole week of eating, not just each day, especially if you're intermittent or extended fasting. That's right, Grandma does keto. So that was back to the comment about the person who was eating a whole lot of protein and was trying to offset that with adding in fat bombs to get more fat. You're right. Look at the whole week. It's not about the day by day. It's how you're doing uh, over time. Steph says, I was just helping someone on Facebook about this. Thank you for this. Fat for flavor and satiety. All day, every day. Uh, if you're, you're used, bleh. Jesse says, if you're used to sweets of any kind, set your limits. Be strict. Only allow, allow X number a week. Don't go over it. If you lose control, stop. And or just stop altogether and see how you do. And I'm a big fan of getting people to push themselves to do things that they didn't think they could do. I'm doing that right now with carnivore. I have concerns about carnivore and gut health and uh, nutrient density and that kind of thing. But I'm going to give it a go. I want to see how I do. I'm running quantifiable blood markers. That's how you do this. And so same with fat bombs. If you want to see how you do with them, great. But if you find that they trigger you, then you back off of them. And you know that now about yourself. Vesna says, my friend started keto last summer after years of trying to convince her what changed. She discovered fat bombs. Now she's doing great in every way. And see, Vesna, I think the people that do well on fat bombs, I I'm so happy for them. I think m most people that try keto could probably do it with real whole foods, uh, but if fat bombs are the caveat and the, uh, I guess, transitionary way of getting into keto, I'm all for that. What I'm not for is people continuing to consume them, thinking they have to hit some imaginary macronutrient ratio in order to be keto. Keto Robin says, I got through the holidays with keto treats, but knew immediately if I was going to drop weight again, I had to stop and go back to the basics. Yeah, I did a lot of baking during the holidays as well. Um, and my sister was in town, and so we did a lot of baking. I cooked from Tasha Newton's uh, Southern Keto Cookbook, and it's got a lot of great recipes in there. And, and same thing, I knew I had to back away from doing that. But holidays are the holidays, and you use it as a treat time. That's fine, a keto treat time. Um, but then right back on plan now. Uh, Alberto says, I arrived late to the ramp, by, but I avoid snacks because I like to kick up the good hormones while fasting. So no snacking for me. And yeah, you get so many benefits from, from allowing your body to fast. So people are popping fat bombs as a snack. And again, if you're keto, snacking doesn't really need to be a thing, um, and if it is a thing, it means you're not eating enough fat in the meals that you're eating. So why not put that fat in the meals that you're eating so that you don't have to have a fat bomb in between meals, right? That makes sense. Uh, I only used them in the early days 18 months ago, says Downtown Vapors. And again, I would love to know what makes you or when do you know in your head that it's time to come off of them? And so... I would love to hear, and maybe we do another rant about that for another day. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Fat bombs only if you're craving a donut and just about to give up. Yeah, at that point, eat a fat bomb. <laughs> so if you want a donut, in fact, I did a uh, speaking tour over in Australia a couple of years ago, and I went to Perth, Australia, and there's this really great keto restaurant concept out there called the Caribou Cafe. And the guy that owns it uh, sells only like keto dessert type of things. And one of the things he did was he made like a little donut shaped fat bomb and very little sweetener, lots of coconut oil, lots of, you know, goodies in there. Um, and I thought that's a great idea. People get the visual of a donut, but then when they bite into it, they're getting the goodness that is the fat. So if it's something that prevents you from having a crappy garbage, I'm all for that. 
uh, not answering uh, general questions right now, Ash, but if you will send me that in a message, I'm happy to help you about your blood pressure. Uh, Kat says, never wanted it. A spoon of homemade almond butter is everything for me. And what's funny is there's a company out there called Drop an F-Bomb, uh, the Love You Foods company, and they have these F-Bombs. And so people uh, will often mock me and say, well, I thought you were against fat bombs because you have those F-Bombs and aren't those fat bombs. And that's not what I'm talking about. That's nut butter. And I agree with you, Kitty Catic. I think nut butter is a good enough like fat bomb if you need something like that. That's not the same thing as all these highly sweetened coconut oil based kind of treats that are being made uh, for fat bombs. Uh, a lot of people say to use fat as a lever. What are your thoughts on that? So Jesse, that is from a group of people that call themselves keto that are high protein and I do not subscribe to that. Maybe we'll do a whole nother Jimmy Ranch just on that one. But uh, yeah, they love to talk about uh, carbs are a limit, fat is a lever, protein is a goal. Don't get me started on that today. Not today's topic, but a topic for another day. Karen Meek White says, I tried fat bombs a few times in the beginning and they were too easy to overdo it. I learned that I kept my focus on looking for a substitute for sweets that I wanted to give up. Uh, it truly kept me uh, from success. That's great. And and that's that is a real and present danger. If you see it and it looks like a treat, you're going to eat it, and especially if you came from a binge eating background, you're going to eat it and then eat another one and eat another one and eat, and when does it stop? So that's the concern. I find the less complicated my menu is, the better. Waiting for my grandchildren to leave to join you with carnivore says Berkeley Monroe. Yeah, carnivore is pretty easy. Eat meat. That's it. There are no fat bombs uh, with carnivore. Just eat meat. And so the simplicity does make it easier. So if you start adding in the complexity that is adding in fat bombs, maybe it makes it harder on people. That's a good point. Uh, Kitty Catic fan of Bulletproof Coffee, just because I need that fasting caffeine to deal with my crowd. Yeah, you've got a, a, little a couple of little munchkins and, a, and an animal. Yes. Uh, Bonnie says, I could eat grass-fed butter by the pound, LOL, butter and bacon, yummy. Yeah, there's actually a book out there called The Bacon and Butter Diet. So <laughs> it's a ketogenic book, but crafty. Uh, Keisha Farrar says, I was drinking coffee and wasn't even finishing my coffee, so I stopped drinking the coffee. Haven't had a coffee in a week. And see, I think sometimes when we add things to our diet, like a Bulletproof coffee, not that yours was bulletproof, but uh, bulletproof coffee or fat bombs, they become this habit that you just pick up because that's just what you do. And so if it becomes a habit, how do you unbreak that habit? It's very, very difficult. Mrs. Regina says, if I want to eat fat to satiety, but I still feel a little bit hungry after eating a fatty cut of meat, how do I appropriately supplement healthy fat? I'm doing carnivore at the moment. So if you're still hungry, eat more. That's it. Eat more. Don't, don't make this complicated. If you eat something that's a fatty cut of meat, maybe you didn't eat enough of it. So eat more of it. That's the beauty of all this, you guys. We try to make it hard. Well, I've had my five ounces of meat today and I'm still hungry. And Eat more. Eat more. If your body is giving you the signal for hunger, then maybe you did not eat enough. And most of the time, when you're hungry, you didn't eat enough fat and or mix of fat and protein. Now, the last time I ate was at 2.30 yesterday, and it is now 11 a.m. today. I am still not hungry. I'm not hungry. And that's the beauty of the satiation that comes from the fatty meals that I had yesterday. I had sausage patties and I had hamburgers. Very high in fat, almost three fourths of it, of my diet yesterday was uh, fat. And the rest was protein, no carbohydrates. And your body will reward you by calming down all those hunger signals. So if you're still hungry after eating, you didn't eat enough, eat some more. And keep it low carb, moderate protein, high fat. Uh, bu, 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 that's what I'm working on. Bulletproof coffee. 
around seven and I don't get hungry till four. See, Ash, you are the perfect example of what I'm talking about. That is great. If that's working for you and it's keeping you off of having to have uh, huge meals for breakfast and or lunch, then great. That's awesome. My low carb path. Hello there. Thanks for being here. So agree, Jimmy. So many people stall on keto because they continue drinking bulletproof coffee and they eat the fat bombs. It's a slippery slope for sure. Uh, having steak and eggs with extra butter beats fat bombs all day, says Ashton. I agree. <laughs> Berkeley Monroe says, I'm just too lazy to make fat bombs. Yeah, they are a little bit of work because you have to like you know, melt the coconut oil and the cocoa butter and the chocolate and whatever, and then pour it into the mold and let it set. It's a lot of work. So, uh, I hate to see people give up on keto because they stall because of the fat bombs and the like. Drop them and stick to keto, says my low carb path. And she knows she's lost triple digits, you guys. She knows that in order to be successful at this, you have to do the things that's put in the work. And the work is choosing real whole foods and using fat strategically with those foods to make you successful on keto. Regina says, sweeteners kick me out of ketosis, so I just can't have them. I don't eat fat bombs with sweetener for that very reason. And it's good you know that about yourself. Uh, any good keto recipe, books, blogs that you can recommend? Yeah, anything by Maria Emmerich. Um, I love that girl to death. She is awesome. All right. Uh, keto neogenesis almost a year in. I still think I want sweet flavor. When I indulge, I almost immediately go for pink Himalayan sea salt under the tongue to get the savory flavor back. And it's a process. Yeah. And I think fat bombs that are sweetened with these sweeteners, they continue that addiction, wanting that sweetness. Uh, Fedora Scrub says, just starting, excited to see results in better health. Diet, Dr. Pepper is my tempt, uh, temptress, planning on sticking with water. We'll do what you got to do. When you first start, this is hard. Like I said, I went from 16 cans of Coca-Cola a day and suddenly none. So I used a lot of diet soda early on and it was a godsend to me when I first started. And slowly, you and see, this is the thing, guys. You're on your journey. You're at the point in your journey where you're having to make transitions if you're just starting. Make those transitions. Don't let, don't let people say you've got to be absolutely 100% perfect in the beginning because you do not. You know, I think about 410 pound Jimmy Moore quite a bit and all of the things that I had going on in my diet at the time, the Coca-Colas, the Little Debbie snack cakes, the fast food from Taco Bell and McDonald's and the convenience store junk food, you name it, I was stuffing my mouth. And if somebody told me in 2004, oh, no, 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 Jimmy Moore, if you want to do keto the right way, you've got to do grass-fed beef, you've got, got to do uh, organic vegetables, you've got to have your own chickens, and you can't get store-bought stuff. No. If they'd have said that to me, I would have went, <clears throat> and would have never gone low carb. So let's not let good enough get in the way of success. And, and that's ancillary to what I'm talking about here today, but it's an important point that I wanna underscore is we have to see people where they are and give them tools to help them. Fat bombs can be a tool, but the concern is if you stick with that tool um, for far too long, you can actually get regression in your progress. Uh, when they sit on the freezer for nine months, that's when you're off of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you made a bunch of fat bombs and put them in the freezer, says Grandma does keto. <laughs> and then she forgot about them. So, yeah, that's when you know. Uh, my low carb path, I knew uh, when it was time to come off of them when I stalled in my weight for a long time. I dropped the fat bombs and my bulletproof coffee and it broke my stall. Good point. Never understood the fat as a lever term. Yeah, we're going to get to that at some point. Uh, but the Finney and Volick book actually says when in doubt, eat more fat. Yeah. Uh, Mary, thank you for bringing that up. Hello, Mary. Uh, keto Mary 71 is right in their books. Uh, Dr. Jeff Volick and Dr. Steve Finney, they say when in doubt, cut the carbs, when in doubt, add more fat. That's it. But add it to your food. Don't add it in the form of a fat bomb. 
All righty, man, we've been on here a long time today. So thank you guys for being here. So many great comments. Um, I don't even know how long we've gone here. So ba -ba -ba -ba. I used to do Taco Bell breakfast daily. I now view it as an abusive ex and gl <laughs> glad to no longer feel I need it. Yeah, I pass right by a Taco Bell all the time and I go, uh, three bean burritos, no onions, add sour cream. Oh yeah, I don't eat there anymore. So. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for this Jimmy Rants. What an epic Jimmy Rants today. And the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is I'm no fan of fat bombs when you go keto because you're not retraining yourself to learn how to add appropriate amounts of fat to your meals. So if you're having to eat fat bombs, it means you ain't figured it out yet how to use real whole food based fats in your meals. Learn it sooner than later and you'll thank me later that I warned you about using fat bombs, bulletproof coffee, any exogenous source of fat like that. All right, guys, JimmyRance.com is the website if you missed this show uh, and don't know how it works. Here's how it works. We start off on Instagram. We do a live video a couple of times a day. So go follow me on Instagram at living low carb man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. You can engage live in the content, just like all these awesome people did here today. And if you miss me live, go uh, watch the replay on Instagram. It's up there for 24 hours. If you miss it after 24 hours, they do disappear from Instagram. I wish they would leave them up, but they don't. Um, so after 24 hours, go to YouTube and you can access all the past episodes on YouTube. Just type in Jimmy Rants and then some topic you want to see if I've ranted about and you will find it on YouTube. And then finally, we have a best of the best Jimmy Rants on Apple Podcasts in podcast form. And we put a nice little music bed underneath the rant so you get a nice entertaining 15-ish, 10, 15-ish minute uh, Jimmy Rants. Although this one... This one went probably almost an hour, so I'm not sure how they're going to whittle it down to 10, 15 minutes, but go check it out, you guys. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, by the way, jimmyrants.com. So until next time, we'll see you then.